Welcome to Really Cool Stuff for the Home podcast, sponsored by HomeWorks. And now with today's show on all the ways to improve your home is your host, Denise Sanchez. Hi, this is Denise from HomeWorks, Really Cool Stuff for the Home. And on this podcast, I wanted to introduce you to one of my favorite lines of appliances. It's a very, very old line of appliances. They've been around since 1890. American-made, we love that. And they only did professional and commercial equipment until 2002, where they debuted into the residential market, and the rest is history. My co-host is Nick Lamnick from Blue Star, and he started off with Blue Star just delivering trucks. Um, and Nick, can you tell us a little bit about you? Yeah. Uh, first off, it's great to virtually meet you. Um, <laughs> but uh, it's been a pleasure working with you so far. But uh, yeah, I got my start. I actually um, started working at a bar across the street from the factory. Uh-huh. That made, uh, I played rugby for the Reading rugby team and Blue Stars made in Reading, Pennsylvania. Mm-hmm. Um, so the president of the company at that time owned that bar. And he asked me to come over and start working for him. So I started out load, unloading our trucks, stocking our assembly line. Um, I kept count of every nut and every bolt that goes into the product. And there's a lot of them. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But it was a great way to learn. Mm-hmm. Um, so I kind of slaved away, did that for a very long time. Um, and then I started running our assembly line. I ran our factory. Then I ran our service department for about two years. And they asked me to uh, clean up how I look. And uh, <laughs> oh my goodness. Sales. And now with this uh, quarantine, I'm going back to the way I yeah. used to look because I figured out we'll be able to do it for a long time. Mm-hmm. But, uh, it was a great way to kind of come up because uh, there's a lot of sales reps out there that kind of regurgitate uh, information that it's in the manual. Mm-hmm. Um, I've actually built these things. I've serviced them. I've built them on the assembly line. I fixed them. Um, I used to go in early every day and stock the assembly line with every part they needed. So it's a great way to learn. And I, I think I kind of got in when when I started. We made an RMB and an RCS. Right. The RCS Much more had, limited. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Yes. The RCS had plastic uh-huh. knobs. Uh-huh. It didn't even have a convection fan in it. Really? Uh, Before my yeah. time even? Because I think I started around 2002, 2003. Okay, yeah. Uh, mm-hmm. March will be my 14th anniversary. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Um, but, yeah, it's I, 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 I always say I got on a good horse early. Mm-hmm. Um, because when I started, we uh, not many people heard of us. It was right. a, uh, a word-of-mouth line. Uh, we didn't really have a mark. Our marketing department was mass, who you know. Yeah. Yeah. Um, who just kind of ran a Facebook page. Mm-hmm. We didn't really have much budget behind it. And it was just a word of mouth company that chefs knew about. Mm-hmm. Uh, we made about 10 ranges a day mm-hmm. back in that day. And, and um, it, now we've, since 2008, we've, uh, we're have we doing 10 times the business. Oh my goodness, yes. And in fact, yeah. how I was introduced to this product was through chefs. They would mm-hmm. walk in my store about 2002, 2003, and they wanted a Blue Star for their personal home. So that's how I became, you know, aware of them. Uh, before that, I had never heard of them. And they tell me all the different things about why, you know, you want a Blue Star. So I started looking into it more and more. Did a couple of sales and had good feedback. And the rest is history there as well. But let's yeah. talk about why they would want this range over another range that they call professional ranges. They look like pro ranges, but they're so much different than a Blue Star pro, a pro range. The main difference is the the open burners on the top. Mm-hmm. Um, a lot of range with, that are pro c- c- in the pro range category all will mostly have sealed burners. There's not many other brands that have the open burner. If they do, they're um, I'd like to think that we are doing a little better uh, in terms of getting ourselves out there. Um, but um, the big difference is the open burner. Um, it, uh, as you've seen in my videos that I've done before, it delivers the heat evenly across the cooking surface, straight up to where you're cooking. Whereas a sealed burner, it's just kind of, it's more common, um, but it pushes the heat out. Um, you can, uh, we do what's called the flour test. We mm. put a pan on top of the burner. You evenly distribute flour across that pan, and the flour will brown where the heat is getting delivered. So on a sealed burner, no matter what shape, um, if it's a star or a circle, if it's got one ring, two rings, it's pushing the heat. The ports are all faced out, um, east to west. So all that flour will brown on the outside and slowly come in. If you're cooking an egg, the yolk is the last thing to cook. Uh, whereas on the open burner, everything is pushed evenly across and up towards what you're cooking. Uh, so you're not wasting any heat by pushing it out in your kitchen. Um, and you're 
completely even cooking on that flour test all the flour browns the exact same time mm -hmm. so that's really why chefs really prefer that open burner um sealed burners kind of went by because it's a lot easier to mass produce them the right. open burner takes mm -hmm. a lot of uh fine tuning on mm -hmm. our assembly line mm -hmm. where you're doing the air gas mix uh so a lot of people wolf made a great open burner viking made a great mm -hmm. open burner they quit doing it uh, yeah, mm -hmm. but they went to sealed burners mm -hmm. because mass production. Right. Uh, easier just to, you put the igniter on, send it down the line. Yeah. Yeah. Whereas the open burner, you have to do the air shutter adjustment. You have to adjust the igniter so it's lighting in five clicks. Mm -hmm. So each burner takes about 15, 20 minutes of fine tuning on our mm -hmm. assembly line. Mm -hmm. So when you're getting towards a 48 or a 60, that's a good hour and a half, mm -hmm. two hours of fine tuning. Mm -hmm. um, so, but that's our story that we want to deliver that open burner. We want to deliver that restaurant mm -hmm. performance. So that's why we stick with open burners. We do have a sealed burner for those customers that um, don't really need the restaurant performance. Uh, they're just your day-to-day -day cooks. Um, and we make a very good sealed burner unit at a really good budget price with all the custom options. Mm -hmm. And But it's a different niche of customer. Right. Uh, and it's also a customer that just doesn't understand or doesn't want to learn about an open burner. They're just afraid of it. That's not what they're used to. Another mm -hmm. thing I like about the the commercial range by Blue Star is that the top is all cast iron on the open burner. So yeah. it's much more durable, easier to clean. And over the years, it actually looks prettier than the day that you first get it. Kind of like grandma's old cast iron pan, you know, over the years that it gets that patina, right? Yeah, exactly. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And then the one thing I always tell too, as I talked about the direction of the heat, um, with the, with, if you're, if you have a spillover, where's it spilling next to your pot, next to your pan, um, mm -hmm. onto that cooking surface. And then on a sealed burner, where's that heat going mm -hmm. next to the burner? Uh, so it's kind of cooking that onto that surface with the open burner, all the heat's going up. So if you have a spillover, it's not cooking it onto the surface. Mm -hmm. When you're done, you just wipe it and it wipes right up. And uh, Nick, I have to confess, I have stolen something from you. Go ahead. I love <laughs> the demo that you do. And I don't know whether you can kind of turn around and show it, but where you literally cup your hands around the burner to demonstrate how it doesn't flare out to the sides, the heat. All the energy goes up towards that pan. And when you're yeah. looking at a 22,000 or 25,000 BTU burner, that's very impressive. And it's funny because I'll have to admit I stole that from somebody. <gasps> you did? Uh, well, it's I, very I effective. From, I have to give credit to uh, Paul Mertens at Wilkinson Supply mm -hmm. in Raleigh, North Carolina. Mm -hmm. Showed me that trick. It's very effective. And I've used it all the time. And I always I try to give him credit for this too. Mm -hmm. But uh, yeah, if I can, uh, let's see, I'll see. Should I move this towards it or? Um, yeah, anything you want to do. I'll turn on the burn. Yeah. Yeah, the but showcase. I have 22,000 BTUs on the burner so you got quite amount of power going up there um i have it heating up but you can literally take your hand and put them right there that's and impressive mm -hmm. and talk to your customer mm -hmm. it's really showing that the heat is going towards what you're cooking mm -hmm. um it's not going out in your kitchen um no. so i can sit here all day and talk to you like this yeah and no wasted energy all going <laughs> towards that pan exactly you don't have just the ring of fire. You know, you've got all those uh, orifices as well. You know, you can take a, a piece of string, and I think on a on a on a regular round one, you've got like six inches of string. And if you yeah. take the string and and loop it around all the different orifices, you've got like a foot. I mean, that's yeah. incredible too. That makes a yeah. big difference. And and <laughs> and another thing, BTU. So just in case we're talking about BTU for our listeners, what is a BTU? We relate that to um, how effective or how much performance a, a, uh, a burner will give you. And it's yeah. literally a British thermal unit is what it means. Yeah. And it's a form of measurement that measures um, every, every BTU refers to the amount of energy that's required to increase the temperature of a pound of water by one degree. Uh, and it's supposed to be done, you know, within an hour's time. So that's what a BTU is, just in case every, someone out there doesn't understand what that is. Yes. Um, another thing that is interesting, too, that I think, when you have um, <clears throat> LP, this is, to me, a big deal in my area because we have, you know, the city proper, and then we have so many people in the outlying areas of our city where more and more of our citizens live, and they have to be liquid propane. Mm -hmm. The city isn't delivering uh, the fuel source. So any, any range can be converted either by the manufacturer or, or 
in the field locally uh, from natural gas to liquid propane. But with Blue Star, there is one better. Tell them about that, how it's built to LP. Well, we make them to order. Um, so most ranges come where they could come automatically with a conversion kit. Mm. Uh, again, mm -hmm. it's a mass production thing. Just crank out natural gas ranges, put a kit with it, and send it out. Um, within that instance, you lose power. Um, you lose some performance, you lose some power. About 10 to 20% from what I understand depends on the manufacturer. That's a lot yeah. of BTU loss. Yeah, yeah. And if you're buying it for performance, that's, yeah, that's a, that's a big factor. Um, we make ours to order um for gas type as well mm. uh, we dial in all of our orifices so they're the exact same the exact size that you need to get the same btus mm -hmm. and our regulator is set for natural lp as well so actually if you order an lp blue star you're not losing any power that's amazing. Uh, you're not losing any performance mm -hmm. out of it mm -hmm. the twenty five thousand btu burner is still delivering twenty five thousand btus mm -hmm. on an lp mm -hmm. um so they they we haven't lost any power mm -hmm. performance on that one at all and even for the customers that live, like I have customers that also have uh, ranches that may be in the mountains in Colorado, you know, in high elevations um, mm -hmm. as well, speak to that, that they can. Well, and we do, we can dial in towards elevations. If you're in elevations over 2,000 feet, mm -hmm. um, you let us know and we can dial in the orifices for you. Mm -hmm. So it performs perfectly. Um, also, another thing to note in houses that are set away if you lose power you can still use all of yeah. our burners mm -hmm. if power goes mm -hmm. um the top burners the ovens no mm -hmm. uh, but the top burners you can still lighten the barbecue lighter and mm -hmm. you're still in business uh, if you lose power you can still cook for your family and that's uh, been an yeah. interesting question of light that i get from a lot of customers you know concerned about the way things are going right now can i light my mm -hmm. cooktop without having if there's a problem you know with no electricity yeah yeah and, and that's another thing i always push too is um it keeps our service rate pretty low. Uh, we stay away from electronics mm -hmm. as much as possible. Um, if you look at this, there's no motherboard, there's no display, mm -hmm. there's nothing that's going to fry out over time. Um, our theory is high heat and electronics don't always mix so well. Mm -hmm. So uh, our main products, our bread and butter, are just these basic things where you just turn a knob and a valve puts gas to a burner. There's not much that can go wrong. Um, and if it does go wrong, it's an easy fix. There's an igniter with one screw that pops it right on. Uh, and, so and that's a metal knob to too, a metal knob, not a plastic knob. Very, yes. very well made, <laughs> yes. right? Yeah, it's a heavy duty metal knob, mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> so um, also too, um, um, when we look at um, doing these tops, we have all different sizes as well. You have a drop-in cooktop, mm -hmm. right? Uh, a 30 and a 36 inch drop-in. That's also an open burner. And then we have uh, range tops and ranges from uh, 24 inches all the way up to 60. Right. Yeah. Now. So um, there's customers that if you're in a small apartment, I know our New York reps does a lot, our, does a lot of stuff at 24 inch ranges. Um, 24 inch range tops where you're crammed in there. Mm -hmm. um, and then if you have the large open kitchen where you have a customer that can do a 60, mm -hmm. um, I had a, I dealt with a Shaquille O'Neal. Ah. Uh, he did a 60 inch range top and two 36 inch gas wall ovens. Uh -huh. It was obviously for him. Yeah. So he <laughs> yeah. had to go that size. I'm surprised he didn't do two 60 inch ranges. <laughs> yeah. No. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Amazing. Also, a space, though, we have uh, French doors. Mm -hmm. uh, we have a freestanding range with French mm -hmm. doors, our wall ovens. Mm -hmm. um, so if you're in a more of a uh, confined kitchen, um, if this island was butted up a little closer to this and this was the range, we can do French doors. Mm -hmm. uh, so you're not pushed back into your, into your wall right. or your island. So we have a lot of options there for whatever space limitations you might have. You know, uh, one of the local um, restaurant um, uh, chains uh, that offer, you know, commercial equipment, um, they will send a lot of times customers into our showroom, customers that have gone into their showroom to look for commercial ranges. And um, people don't realize that you cannot put a true commercial range into a residential home. If you do, and something happens and say your house burns down, your insurance company will not pay for it because it's not designed um, or certified for residential use. So the, everyone's looking for that heavy duty commercial, you know, pro cooking. I wanna do wok cooking, but I wanna get the same result as if I'm in a Chinese restaurant. And you can yeah. get it with Blue Star. Show them how you would do the, the take the grate off for a wok. 
Cool, perfect. And the, for wok cooking, a lot of rings come with what's called a wok ring. Mm, right. Um, and it basically is a ring, your cradle that you put on top of your grate that lifts the wok up mm. and you cradle it on. Kind of defeats the purpose of wok cooking. Um, if for somebody that's truly doing authentic wok cooking, they want searing heat right away. Mm -hmm. um, so what we have for our burner setup, um, I'll carry it over. Instead of a wok ring, you just remove the grate. Uh, this is any burner can do this and you drop your wok right on uh, so you get searing heat right away um, and even searing heat on the bottom the sides um, it's all ready to go i actually had a i was doing a cooking demo and i was doing wok cooking and i got two into talking um, a customer asked me a question i was i took about two minutes to answer it and i turned the burner on i had the wok on and i answered the question i was like all right let's get to cooking and i put the cooking oil on and it, burst into a fireball in, <laughs> in the walk and <laughs> I had to run out of the deal and just throw the walk out. Oh my God. Yeah. But uh, it, was a, it, it took two minutes to do that yeah. because it was such high heat. Mm -hmm. um, and so quickly it got so hot. So uh, again, I, I, I learned a lot by making mistakes and that right. was one of them. Mm -hmm. It's always put the cooking oil in right after I turn it on. <laughs> yeah. Like, yeah, yeah, I just took two minutes to answer the question that happened. Yeah. But uh, again, like, like you were saying, um, with commercial cooking equipment. We were, um, we made garland commercial ranges for decades. Right. But basically what the Blue Star line is, we uh, we made garland commercial cooking equipment for decades. Um, and before that we made prizer stoves, which are wooden coal burning stoves. But garland is known as one of the top commercial brands mm -hmm. that you can get. And uh, we basically took all the power and performance of the garland and we got it UL approved for residential use. And that's exactly what the Blue Star line is. Mm -hmm. And if you look at the garlands, they look like tanks. So mm -hmm. basically what we did, we streamlined mm -hmm. the look, but kept all the power and performance. Mm -hmm. And that's exactly what Blue Star is. So for people that come from, um, that come into your store saying that a chef sent me here mm -hmm. looking for a commercial product, this is as close as you're going to get mm -hmm. that's residentially approved um, because we made the best commercial appliances in the industry for decades. And even their range, the ovens and the ranges and in the wall ovens, they will accommodate a commercial size baking tray, which is very impressive. That's huge. And in the smaller ovens on the, for like the 48 inch, it's probably the largest, no, it is. It's the largest capacity side oven, which is a half size baking sheet. And you can't even buy those in a regular retail. You have to go to a, a commercial restaurant supply house in order to get them. They're like 12 yeah. bucks, but you can do all your Christmas cookies in one fell swoop, you know, because of the large capacity of the ovens. Right. That's another thing that they brought as well. One of the main things when people talk about capacity is mm -hmm. um, they'll usually give you width times height right. times depth mm -hmm. and give you that number. Mm -hmm. And that's not usable capacity. Right. We always talk about our usable capacity. Uh -huh. um, that takes into account things that will um, impede on the, on the on the area there. So uh, a door with extra insulation, um, a convection fan that comes in, and um, broilers that drop down, those all impede on usable capacity. Mm -hmm. So we always like that. We, we made sure we engineered our, our, all of our cavities to have top maximum usable capacity with our, our wall ovens, our ranges, our refrigerators. Uh, we made sure that was always a key selling point. Uh, for example, our 30 inch range has 4.5 cubic feet. If you do the width times height, mm -hmm, side depth. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, our usable capacity is 4.1. Um, one of our top competitors, their 30 inch range has 4.4. They market 4.4 cubic feet. Their usable capacity is 2.9. That's huge. Difference. So it's a very, <laughs> it's a very deceptive yeah. number. Yeah. Um, that's why we, and nobody markets that. Yeah. Uh, we market the usable capacity because that's mm -hmm. what you can actually use. And that's why all of our displays have those full size sheet pans mm -hmm. and you could walk around your entire showroom and try to jam them in everything and they're not going to fit. Uh, yeah. So <laughs> that's one of our big selling points. Yeah. As well. Yeah. And they, another thing about them being American made, I understand they also use American stainless steel. Is that correct? And it's a heavier gauge. Correct. They actually weigh more than the typical luxury appliance yeah. in the kind of the same category. Yeah, yeah. Well, like, like I said, I started as our shipping and receiving mm -hmm. inventory man. When our, our old factory didn't have a loading dock, I mm -hmm. had to physically, I had to, with a tow motor, put a range up on a truck and then push oh, it across. Oh, my goodness. So, yeah. I know how, how I used to be in much better shape, <laughs> but I know how heavy they, they are. Yeah, they're extremely heavy. Mm -hmm. um, our steel is 16 gauge 304 grade stainless mm -hmm, steel. Mm -hmm. um, and we source uh, primarily source American. Mm -hmm. um, so that's as all this is going, a lot of brands are kind of ha 
having some speed bumps um, sourcing not, their raw yeah. materials mm-hmm. uh, were mm-hmm. kind of coming along a lot smoother. Right, uh, because of that. As you see. Yeah. And I know that time. in talking with some of the owners in the past, they even tried to get the veterans to come to work there. I mean, they're a very, very strong, you know, American company focused yeah. on American, you know, products and American materials. That, that meant has always meant a lot to Blue Star. It's very deceptive. You see a Made in America sticker, there's always a small print that says engineered and assembled in America. Yes. Yeah. The parts come from everywhere else around the globe and they're right. put together. Mm-hmm. Um, but uh, I know when I was working there and I was our shipping receiving manager, our primary steel vendor was Patriot Metals out of Easton, Pennsylvania. Mm-hmm. Um, Ryerson Steel out of Greensboro, North Carolina was our secondary steel vendor. Um, our cast iron come from Vermont Castings. Uh, so we made sure to source everything within that to kind of mm-hmm. keep keep that story. Uh, so like I said, that main America stickers can be deceptive as well. Uh, mm-hmm. so we want to make sure it's as true to made yeah. America as possible. Yeah. Uh, our, our tagline was always handcrafted with American raw materials. Right. Right. That that's nice these days. It really is. I mean, I have some great products from around the world, uh, you know, Germany mm-hmm. and, and Italy and all, and they're, they're great products, but it, it's a, uh, it's a satisfaction to be able to have something that you can really love and have a passion for and also be American made. You know, that's a nice feature. Yeah. And they're celebrating 140 years. Um, and yeah. they're, they're offering some uh, special promotions right now. But that's a big achievement. An American company, a manufacturing company, 140 years. I bet y'all are really celebrating up there about that. At the factory, I guess, yeah. <laughs> but uh, <laughs> yeah. One, one of the big things that kept us rolling through is our powder coating operation. Yeah, right. um, as we As you know, we offer, we have over a thousand color options uh. um, because we do all of our painting in-house. Um, so even in lean years, um, during depression eras, mm-hmm. our powder coating operation actually kept us through. Mm-hmm. Um, so we can say we're the longest continuously running appliance factory in America. Mm-hmm. And at 140 years, uh, yeah, it's... And, it's quite and, impressive. And only getting better. And huge offer, huge, huge difference in offer, offerings that they offer now. In fact, we have the Blue Star Chef Event Center for the San Antonio area. And before COVID, we would have, you know, chefs come in a couple of times a month and we would have, you know, demonstrations on the results. Like wok cooking was very popular. You know, broiling yeah. steaks with that salamander broiler, uh, very popular. You know, melting chocolate in a um, a pan without a double boiler and having to sit there for hours and we would drop in chocolate chips at the beginning of the um of the the chef event and we would show the people see you can still see the the the, the chips and put a little Mm -hmm. um spoon in and it would kind of dissolve but all day long in that that simmer burner it's a specialty burner is 130 degrees that's about like our hot water heaters so yeah. for like sauces, chocolates, you know, you want to have something sitting there simmering for long periods of time, that is a perfect burner. Yeah. Uh, you know, um, so it's not just the high highs that are important. We talked about this. We were talking about this through email that people think highs are just, that's where it's at. That is very yeah. important for boiling water, searing, you know, specialty cooking, like your wok cooking. But when you're going to be doing other specialty cooking, like sauces and things, you need low, low. All the burners go down low to a beautiful simmer. But that one specialty back burner, that is super nice. Yeah, yeah, and you can adjust the grates um, so you can do different turns of the the center grate mm-hmm. where the grate lifts up to different levels, uh, so you can actually lift it away mm-hmm. from the burner even mm-hmm. more uh, if you want really really delicate right. simmers. Right. But also, it's a, important to know it's it's, it's um, a constant simmer where a right. lot of people that try to achieve that low temperature will do on and the burner goes on and off yes. and on and off because and they, they can't keep that low heat. Yeah. Um, this is a constant simmer where it's continuously even low heat. And it's a numbers game. They take that on off. It's first of all, very aggravating to some customers, especially people that like to do use the low simmer a lot. They, they tend to do the specialty cooking and they'll say, it drives me crazy that on off, on off, yeah. clicking on off. And what is it doing? You know, I said, well, it's, it's making, it's making numbers in games is what it's doing but it's burning or scorching you know they can't do a cream sauce it's supposed to be they said it's real real low well it's it, it is and it isn't also a sealed burner is constantly reaching up for oxygen so you get that flare-up that you don't get with an open burner and I had an experience in um, this was in, in a competitor's training many years ago I'm talking like 
20 years ago, and where they did offer a, an open burner. My job for this big national dealer meeting was I was to fry a catfish, a big bunch of catfish. So I was frying the catfish, and about half an hour into it, I'm sitting here turning it up, turning it down, turning it up, turning it down. It was getting too hot, burning, yeah. <laughs> and then not hot enough. A chef yeah. walks by me, and he says, you know, casually, hey, why don't you put that on the open burner? That's going to work out better for you. So I take yeah. my big pan, you know, with hot grease and everything and move it over there gingerly to this open <laughs> burner. And you know what? That drove it home to me because now I could set it and it wasn't reaching up, you know, making it too hot. Yeah. It was finitely perfect. And I got a really good, you know, frying out of it. Yeah. No more worrying about it being too low or too high. So that, even though mentally I understood about open burners and seal burners, once I did it myself and saw what a huge difference it was on a lower setting, that was huge for me. That was the game changer. Yeah, yeah. Definitely. You definitely want the range, the complete range. So. Well, it was really, really great talking to you. And um, um, we're going to be doing more of these, you and I, together. Um, we're, because there's so many things that Blue Star has to offer. And it's not just promoting your company, but also we're educating a consumer about the differences in ranges and understanding about firepower. You know, I think that after this segment, people can understand more when they go into any store or look at making a decision on buying a range. What is it that I want? You know, what and not be as confused at the open burner, seal burner. What is the BTU um, and, and what does it do for me? I think that that's important. I wanted to make these podcasts, you know, a little bit of, about that as well. So that when people come into our store, they're educated and it makes my job easier easier and also they get what they really want and they can understand there's nothing more confusing for a customer to come in and they're just blindsided by all these different you know btus and silk yeah. burners open burners you know what size it's very very confusing very confusing <laughs> definitely but i've been we've never t we've never we've done some email back and forth but we've never have spoken uh, together so this was really nice and i hope to do more of yeah. it so um Will you come back next week and we can talk about some other things? And um, we, we got refrigeration, we got the wall ovens, your custom hoods. I mean, I can go on and on about the things that y'all offer. It's just, it's a very important category for my company. We love Blue Star. We also, um, not only do we sell it and know it, but we service them. We're certified service, um, warranty, and installation. And my guys tell me that the Blue Star, they'll go, it's just like a race car. You can adjust every single burner, the ovens, everything, to exactly what you want. And the customer doesn't want it just like this. They want it a little bit different. We can do that. That's another neat thing. And there are videos out there where if you are a do-it-yourselfer, you can do it yourself. That's how easy these things are to to uh, to work on. Do, and, have you seen and, that as well? Yeah, definitely, definitely. And and that's huge as a as a dealer to have your own installation and service. Um, my most my dealers are most successful have that offering. Right, right. Um, and right. As a, when I'm talking to customers, it's always safe. It's always. I'm always confident setting into dealers like yes, you yes. Um, because there is fine tuning that goes into it. Mm -hmm. um, if they want that simmer burner a little lower, if mm -hmm. they want uh, things, if there's little air shutter adjustments, little things right. that can, when somebody's experienced and knows what they're doing, they're going to get the best blue star yeah. experience. Um, if they order from who knows who, who knows where, and it gets dropped mm -hmm. off in front of their house. Oh my gosh. Good Lord. Just it. to put it inside the house. <laughs> yeah. You're, Guaranteeing Nick. a service call in a week. Uh, I know. <laughs> so, <laughs> Nick, I appreciate you. Thank you so much. I'm looking forward to our next visit. Uh, there's a lot to talk about in the customization of Blue Star and the other offerings. Thank you so very much. Thank and, you uh, very much. The date next week, Thursday. All right. Bye. All right. Take care.